And we're over. And we're live. Welcome to another edition of Notorious DMG, where we are back for the second session of Zweihander with our heroes, question mark? I don't know what to call you guys. You're not really heroes. Yeah, I'm not much of a hero yet. Peasants? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what you are. Vagabonds. Vagabonds. Yeah. Word. And uh, yeah, urchins who are leeching off of Sandow, some of you. But uh, yeah, we're back with the second session. Um, let's do a quick uh, character rundown. Now, forget it. You can go back and watch the first one. We don't need to do a character rundown. Let's do a recap of what happened last week. Do you want me to do it? Or do you guys want to do it? Uh, you do it and we can add flavor. Okay, so you guys were in the village, well, Hamlet, I don't know if it's really a village, a uh, little stop point uh, of Swansea. There was a wedding that was taking place that day. You guys were mistaken for guests. Uh, it was the marriage of Maximilian Steger and Helena Rafke. I'm actually going to, I made something for you guys between last session because I Realize there's a lot of players to this game, and I'm going to keep... I didn't do this with the last group, but Ooh. I built this Ooh. for you guys, and I'm going to... I'll keep adding to it as we play. So, Maximilian and Helena getting married. We had the angry father. It's funny, I put Hans in there, and I went back and looked at it right before we played. His name is Franz, and I kept calling him Franz, Franz or Franz uh, Hans last session. Franz. So, it's... Yeah, he'll stomp you up. Right? Franz Rafke was the father, and... Hans he, is his middle name. That's right. Franz Hans Rafke. He uh he was quite upset at the uh at the wedding because the the bride token had not arrived that he was promised of uh of hemp. It had gone missing. It had left Vorburg two days prior, which is the hometown village of Maximilian. So he was getting quite drunk and uh he was not not happy at all at the festivities. Um you guys are invited, you're brought in as sort of guests um the the groom himself took a particular interest in you sandow and uh invited you guys to kind of like one of the the honor tables the guests of honor table where you guys proceeded to drink your faces off and almost cut off the finger of one of the guests i i really wanted him to fail that, that is it test. fair to say it got a little heated guys it got a little heated Got a little weird. You guys, oh, there was a race that you guys didn't partake in uh, where you would carry a woman on your back. And uh, if you won... I tried, but I'm just so short. You're too short. If you won, you get to... You were married for the for the night until dawn to her. But uh, that didn't transpire. But Sandow got up and did some uh, some entertaining of the crowd. <laughs> Sandow is the only remotely socially capable character in our party. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The gentleman to the right of Franz Hans Rafke there is Lutz, and he was running around the party the whole time, and he was clutching papers and such, and kind of like, uh, he was drinking and sne sneaking drinks wherever he could. Um, I can't remember if you guys spoke to him or not. I can't, I don't think you did. But you learned that he was kind of like his servant. Yeah, we saw him running around, but yeah, I don't think yeah. anyone had the pleasure. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody spoke to him. He Helena, looks so friendly, too. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, look at that. That's a good picture of him. Helena the Bride was very pregnant, but that was not uncommon for this region, as uh, that is practice to ensure that the, the bride uh, can produce children. She is quite a bit younger than Maximilian, and this whole thing was uh, brokered as some sort of uh, business transaction between Franz Hans Rafke and Maximilian Steger. You encountered the groom and the father of the bride in a heated argument uh, later that night where you did find out that the hemp had gone missing. Um, Franz Hans stormed off. Maximilian hired you guys to come with him back to a Vorburg and find out what happened to his missing hemp. Uh, the next morning, you were awoken by Andre Kessler over there, who is his bodyguard. And he had uh, three cell swords. In his, uh, in his, oh, I don't know. What's, gonna, what's the word I'm looking for? Service. And uh, <laughs> on the way there, there was some, uh, some chatting. Uh, Andre Kessler revealed that Heinrich and Dieter Truman 
were entrusted by Maximilian to bring the hemp to Swansea from Vorburg. And that's why they're on the chart there. We don't know much about them, but Andre mentioned in passing that he did not respect Heinrich because he beat his son, Dieter. Uh, but Heinrich is held within high regard by Maximilian. It's like his right-hand man, his like, closest friend. Did we leave anything? Oh, and where do we leave off? We left off at the... At the scene of the slaughter, did we not? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, it was a definite nail-biting cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun! Right, right, right. There we go. So basically, this dude sold his daughter for a cartload of weed, and the weed's gone missing. Yeah, and he's not happy about it. Would you be? So we got that. We've got that going. I thought. I thought about. Uh, I thought about this. Like, I wish I had done this for my original group because there. Yeah, there's a lot of players to this game, um, and this will help keep the names and the faces kind of in check. And I'll keep adding to it next week and all that, and after this week. Sound good. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Hans Franz yeah. Rafki. Okay, so we left off and. Did you guys see this or were you just told about it? Because I remember Hans, not Hans, get out of here, Hans. Andre came back and was informing Max Million of what he saw up ahead. He was scouting because um, Blort no longer wanted to ride with Andre. So Andre was uh, was scouting up ahead by himself. And I believe he came back. He pulled Max Million aside in the cell swords and said, uh, and you overheard that uh, he was talking about the slaughter that he found up ahead in the road. And they told the lady folk, oh, stay in there. Stay, uh, draw the shades. Stay in there. No, no, don't, don't worry. No, no, just a, just a, a slight uh, interruption in the road. They don't want them to get too worried. And I forgot to put on here BB, Helena's friend, who's along for the ride. And is a bit of a... Mm -hmm. She was pretty rude. Yeah, she's super rude. She's just like, what's going on out there? What's, what's the holdup? Why, why aren't we moving? And Max and I was being oh, so polite calm, to her. Calm down, calm down. So, um... Maximilian suggests, uh, why don't why, why don't you uh, why don't you go ahead with Andre and survey the scene and uh, see what uh, you can find up there? And Andre begrudgingly looks at uh, the four of you and lets out a, an audible sigh. He's not uh, not too pleased with this, but uh, he's being paid by Maximilian, and he turns to you and kind of throws his arm up and goes, oh, "Let's let's go." Oh yeah, one uh, one other thing is we kind of got the impression that Maximilian knew what we were going to find uh, as he tried to kind of make a deal uh, for oh. us just to say that, oh yeah, uh, Cart had gone missing or had been waylaid, even if we didn't find it. Uh, find yes. It. So we kind of get the idea he knew what happened. He, he wanted to remain in favor with uh, Franz Rafke. So he was willing to pay you a little bit more to lie. That's right. He mentioned that at lunch. And you guys kind of like, do you want me, you want me to lie for you? And he's like, oh, 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 oh no, 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 I didn't say that. He changed the subject and didn't go there. Okay. So you guys go, oh, well, let's say 10 meters up the road. And you go around a bend and you just see the remnants of a battle. There's a slaughter. There's three wagons. Horses are all butchered. Lying around them are corpses of about a dozen people. All of them are peppered with short, black-fletched arrows. I have experience with uh, battlefield injuries. I will go and check for survivors or injured or anyone that could use my help. Hey, do well, the black feathers mean anything? Well, upon witnessing this, I'm going to have all of you make a routine resolve check to see how you handle seeing this the the horror of this slaughter. All right, I think I have an ability for this. Let me check. Yeah, we're, it's going to see how this is going to affect you mentally. Oh, look at you. Kozel, just this is nothing to you. Blort. Pff, blood? Blood is what brings me closer to my god. You Sandow, you're spirit. fine with this. They could have died in a more extravagant fashion. I have experience with things ending. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm lagging. That's okay. You're fine. You guys are all like, this is nothing. 
even though you're just like a bunch of peasants and villagers and drunks, you're just like, this isn't that bad. So you, you get a closer look. Um, the, the arrows are very crudely made. You're asking about those Sando. They, they have, they're viciously barbed iron heads. So these don't look like they were, they were made by a, a craftsman of any sort. There is savagery afoot here, my companions. <laughs> Most of the people, or the bodies of the, the people lying here, uh, have been shot to death. No survivors, then? No survivors. Are uh, the bodies still warm? They're not. You feel the bodies, and uh, you do recall that it was mentioned that they left two days ago. So it appears that these bodies have been lying here for quite some time. They look like they've been ransacked, like people have uh, stolen pouches, uh, have stripped them to find out if they had valuables. See, that's funny. You you poke around at these bodies, and they're only partly stripped of weapons and armor. Um, so they're not completely stripped, and their money and valuables, for the most part, have been left behind. Does this look like a, you know, just kind of looking around, does this look like a, a place that would be a good ambush spot? Yes. Um, that is an excellent question. Why don't you go ahead? Anybody can go ahead and make me a standard warfare test as you're surveying the scene. You're kind of recreating what took place here, a la CSI. Not me. Oh, you got a critical failure. Yeah, apparently. They came I from the ocean. My sunglasses <laughs> off just right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Wow. What does a match mean? That's a crit. You critically failed. Um, they came from the ocean. I'm I I pull my my trusted Sandow aside and I say, Master, I believe these these arrows, they must have come from underground. <laughs> And I believe you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that everybody for Warfare? So you survey the scene. You try to uh, recreate what took place here the best you can. It looks like the convoy was attacked from both sides of the road. And it looks like they avoided melee as much as possible. It looks like it was just arrows. When you're also looking at the road, you find that the horses... Um, were subject to traps that had been planted in the leaves on the ground. We so should this was warn a setup. our employer that there may be more traps on the road. Hey, man, this is why you got a rake and stuff, man. So the, what's to the side of the road? Trees? Yes, trees on either side. The other thing that's really strange is the bales of hemp are still there. Nobody took off with those, and that is the most valuable cargo that these things were were transported. Well, is the wagon still there? The wagons are there. These men are horses just are dead. some horses are dead, littered with arrows, traps at their feet. Um, some armor, some weapons are taken, but for the most part valuables are left behind. The hemp is there. The wagons are there. It just kind of looks like a slaughter. No Andre's dead attackers either. No. No. No dead attackers. Andre's kind of surveying the scene as well. And he points out that uh, Heinrich, his body is not amongst the dead. That is it the is one. possible that this was a setup, but I don't know what he would gain from just killing all his friends and leaving their belongings. Wait, but is it all his friends? Andre, who's missing here? Uh, Heinrich. Heinrich's missing. And only Heinrich. Yeah, Heinrich and uh, his boy was probably, may have been with him as well, Dieter. Now the question is, were they captured or were they accomplices? What? When you guys are also surveying the scene, can I get you all to make me a challenging scrutinized test? He's part of that scrutinized. I want to check out the uh, tree line as well. Because, yes. I mean, obviously they'd be hiding in the tree lines. And what difficulty? Scrutinize, um, challenging. I'm sorry, Scru a scrutinizing, scrutinized test. I'm oh, sorry, I need to go to challenging. 
Oof. I can only fail. Oh, just oh, barely. Apparently this monocle is no good for this sort of thing. Yeah, right? So you guys are poking about, and you're trying to make heads or tails of what took place here. And for the most part, you're 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 out of your element, and you're you're throwing out wild accusations and ideas, and you're all like, "Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right." And Andre kind of steps over and shakes his head and goes, "No." He he pulls out one of the arrows and he goes, "Look at this. This was this was the craftsmanship, the handiwork of a mutant. No human made these." Listen, there's. There's been mutants poking around here for the last few weeks. And it looks like they finally striked. They haven't attacked Vorberg or anything. But this this is a declaration of war. I whispered to Sandow, I do not have great desire to battle the X-Men. <laughs> so what do we know about mutants? Some they mutants? were once men. Yes, you're correct. Yes, yes, they were. You're, you are correct. Send out. These are men it who were once men. It was a double entendre. They are. They have been corrupted by chaos. So they are like abominations. They may. Have, maybe they've grown tails. Maybe they've got a second head. Maybe they've. They could look normal, but they have like the abilities of an animal. Perhaps they've now taken on the the appearance of an animal. Um, mutations manifest themselves in strange and bizarre random ways, but they are corrupted individuals, once human, who it's now like live... radiation apocalypse mutants type thing. No, more like, um, tainted by the evil gods mutants. Oh, okay. Got it. It's a whole different type of sore that you're dealing with. Yes, exactly. So they now live on the fringes of humanity because they are shunned and hated. And if they show their faces, they will be killed. Because people are very superstitious of these evil gods. And they want nothing to do with people who worship them or are tainted by them. And it really is a shame. If they would just let me use my bone saw, I could <laughs> make them almost as good as new. Just, and there would be no shame. Just saw off that tail. Well, the more practical side of things. We are, what, one day's travel in? You are less less, So, it is only a day's travel between these two places. So, you're like halfway there, if not uh, three quarters of the way there, because you've already stopped for lunch. So, you are very close to Vorberg at this point. Okay, so take Maximilian aside and say, well, it, that card is in good repair. Your bride's price is here. Why not send it back with a few horses? We can camp. Um, Maximilian, uh, Maximilian's back at the at the coach. You went up there with Andre to go to go uh, investigate. So okay, yeah. So I'm gonna but, head uh, back and go back to Maximilian. He tells to Maximilian. He goes. Max goes. Let's. <sighs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if you've heard, but but there have been rumors of mutants in the area. Night is no time to be out here amongst them. We are close to to Vorberg. We we go back. Let us see what has transpired. But for all we know, they've attacked the village. We should go there, find out what's happening. We can come back for the hemp. That is the least of my, my concerns. We came for the hemp. Could we uh, perhaps tow it? Uh, he looks around. He looks to Andre. Andre kind of shrugs. He's like, uh, uh, sir, m sir, it'll it'll take hours to to get the hemp back up in the wagons and repair these wagons that are that are lying there. It might be better to send men in the morning. These. Poor unfortunate souls have been dead for two days. One more day will not make much of a difference in my view. Right. Maybe we should visit the town. Ah, true, true. Maximilian uh, leans into the group and he goes, um, was, was Heinrich among the dead? No, we uh, have not found Heinrich. We believe he may be captured. He breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, at least, at least Heinrich seems to have escaped. 
It depends on what's happened to him. It may be worse for him than these poor dead men right here. There is also great suspicion from your man Andre that he is a betrayer or deceiver of some sorts. He wished us not to discuss it with you, but here I am. <laughs> Andre uh, turns to you and he's visibly upset. He, goes, oh, what, what? <sighs> he, he, he starts to like stammer and cut you off. He goes, Master, you know. You know how I feel about Heinrich. And Maximilian goes, but, uh, Andre, we must, this, he has a child, he has a wife. We must, we must think of his family. Hopefully he's okay. Andre just kind of shakes his head. We should carry on, sir. It's getting late in the day. Signs of mutants behind the attack. I suggest that we're not out here after it gets dark, especially with your bride and her guest. Andre, what would they want? You seem to know something about these mutants. I mean, they killed these men. They didn't take the things of value. You have one man missing only. Why would they rub out this caravan for one lonely human? Yeah, man. Maximilian. Something's fishy. Maximilian <laughs> looks around and uh, he turns his back to the coach and he kind of brings you all in for a huddle and he is a hushed whisper and he goes okay there's there's more going on here than you than you know aha i knew it about 12 years you're not years... going to show us a third nipple now are you <laughs> no i would mutant yeah he he's i am i am not tainted by chaos how dare I draw you my bone saw yeah waldo you got that Listen, about 12 years ago, mutants came to Vorburg. We thought we were done for, a tribe of mutants. I was a much younger man back then, and I wanted to fight it out. Gods, I was strong then. But, uh, before we, we, we met one to make our stand at the village, we, uh, we hid the women folk often in the hills, oh, often... The cave atop uh, the Horned Monk, which oversees Vorberg. The road is overgrown, impossible to find. We 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 figured our, our women folk would be fine. So we we hid the women away twelve years ago. Us men, we we went back to the village. We prepared for battle. We fought as long and as hard as we could. I myself slayed twenty of these. These beasts, these abominations. And then I had an idea. We bluff. There was orcs among them. We bluff the orcs, big boss. About help coming. And if they did not leave, they would be slaughtered. And they believed the story. They ran for their very lives. Unfortunately, when we went to collect our women afterwards... They were all gone. My wife, my daughter, the wives, daughters, and mothers of every man in the village were gone. I fear this is that tribe of mutants have come back again. That's pretty heavy, man. That yes. was super duper dark. Now you understand why I have no desire to stay out here. We must get back to Vorburg. The city is fortified with a, 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 a short palisade. We could at least uh, see them coming before they get there. Who knows what has happened? Who knows what's transpired? These, these beasts, they almost wiped us out 12 years ago. They killed our women. Well, or took them. Who knows what became of our women? Quick, we, we, we must not wait. If they have returned, we must rally the men and the troops. But we don't know what happened to Heinrich either. Has he been... Has he suffered the same fate as your women? I don't know. Hopefully he's, he made his way back to Vorburg. Hopefully he still remains some small semblance of allegiance to your cater of fools 
Max just looks at you, just like she. He's he's already stunned having to tell the tale of losing his wife and his daughter to these these orcs and uh, mutant raiders, and you're and now he's he's dealing with you, and he's just like, oh, what? Why would you say such things? The whole theme is grim and perilous. You better get with it or get off my <laughs> back. Oh. <laughs> so, which one of them Let's move from this place to another? <laughs> Which one of them said they knew they had already said how they feel about Heinrich? Was that Maximilian who said he had strong feelings about Heinrich? Maximilian is like, Heinrich is his closest friend. Andre does not like Heinrich. He does not like him as a man. He doesn't like him as a person he had mentioned in the last session. And he particularly didn't like him because he beats his boy Dieter. Right. What a dick. Right? An asshole. Well... I've heard some troubling rumors about Heinrich, but no one should suffer the fate of being captured by these horrid mutants. I say we should attempt a rescue. It's not a bad idea. But first, we must find out where these these beasts came from. I already well, told you it was underground. Oh, really? Yeah, you man. found traces of this? Right. They came up like mushrooms, man. Yes, I believe that they have acquired over the course of their mutations some sort of mole-based, blind, digging, tunneling powers, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I have zero tracking skills. Can I, like, <laughs> scrutinize the battlefield to see, like, is it possible to see where they came from or yeah, where you, they went? Yeah, you, you can do that. For sure. You guys all could have when you were there. That's fine. Um, He goes, that's... Whoa. He says, that's terrifying. They, that means they could dig into the middle of the village. Right underneath our walls. We uh, could truly already have fallen into that trap. Oh, 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 hold up. They, they eat way too many mushrooms to listen to anything they say. <laughs> he is honestly correct. I have been intoxicated for uh, somewhere along the lines of two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the guy who is tying himself to the back of the carriage and being dragged along the road. <laughs> I forgot all about that. <laughs> it's bad when the alcoholic says that you partake in too many social drugs. Oh, that was hilarious that you did that last session. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. We should gather as much information as we can before we head to Vorberg. He goes, okay. I, I don't disagree. We shouldn't wait out here too much longer. And please be sure that the women do not overhear any of this. Very well. Uh, the rest of you, go ahead and gather information, like I said, and I will wait in the carriage. <laughs> With as, the women. <laughs> as we start to walk out into the field, I I whisper to, to Sandow and and Kozel, I say, you have both been incredibly quiet throughout this. What are your feelings on our situation? I hope it doesn't rain, man. All right, There's I really one... meant. All right, I really meant sand out. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more going on here than Maximilian is telling us. I think he knows a bit more. Mutants. I believe. I believe that. All parties in play are withholding information from us, but I have no real evidence to base this thought on. Andre comes over to the group of you um, when he's walked away from Maximilian and he goes, hey, listen, while we were over there checking things out, I didn't want to say anything to Max, but uh, it looks like the tracks may have come from the direction of the village. You are obviously a poor track they have come from beneath the earth. <laughs> I I didn't get that at all. How no, you see you here, reckon? this man, he fell on his stomach, and if you turn him over, his stomach is full of arrows, so that means obviously the arrows came from beneath. Now what we need to discover is exactly how these mold men approached. <laughs> they must have some subterranean lair that we can find and conquer. Perhaps we could just pour a bunch of oil and water down a hole and snuff them out. You know what? Uh, we're going to be leaving soon. Perhaps you should... Pra uh... Get hitched back up to the wagon real quick. It, I know it takes you a while, you know, to properly uh, be tied to the back of the wagon. Maybe you should go work on that while we figure out what's going on. I was thinking this time I was just going to, you know, 
like flying eagle myself across one of the spokes of the wheels and just spin the whole time. It might, it might give me some semblance of emotion that all of you enjoy so much. You know what, that, that also takes some time. So you go ahead and tie up uh, three of your limbs, and uh, when we're done, I'll tie up the fourth for you. He As I'm to... walking back, I'm just like kicking like mounds of dirt, looking all over at the ground for whole. <laughs> oh, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> He needs some time to think, so he's just going to tie himself to the spokes instead. <laughs> so it appears that the mutants came from the village then. Yeah, it looks like the tracks came from the direction of the village and went back that way, is what Andre reveals. Well, I suppose we should check the village. Uh, two days, it may not be good. Hopefully they have held off the attack. Mm -hmm. so the village is surrounded by a wall, well protected. Andre, how many do you make these tracks? A dozen? Less? A dozen or more, at least. As long as the village was prepared, they should have been able to defend. Let us wow. keep hope. There aren't. Listen. And he, he turns away from his other. The, the, the three seal swords. I am the most competent warrior in the village. It was foolish to send me along with Max. They're essentially... They're, they're... They're not prepared for an attack of this scale. We should make haste and... Get to Vorberg and make sure everyone is, is alright there. Agreed. Yeah, man. Let's go. <laughs> alright, so you guys... Uh, you guys get on your horses or in the carriages or whatever you... However, you're traveling on the spokes of the wheel, and I would uh, like to ask the women what they know about mutants. Oh, Helena and BB are both taken aback. <gasps> they let out a audible. Gasp. Not that there's any reason to be worried. I'm just what? curious if you have any general knowledge. BBS, are there are there mutants up ahead? What what? Why have we oh, stopped no. for so long? Are there? What? No, no, what no. Uh, there, there were. Orcs, not mutants. Uh, orcs, yeah. So uh, nothing to be worried about other orcs. than imminent death. But what do bad. you know about mutants specifically? I know that they are abominations and should be slain on sight. Do you have any reason? How well do you know Heinrich? Uh, both women don't know Heinrich. They go, we are, we're from Swansea. This is our first. This is really our first time going to Vorburg. You know what? Forget I said anything. Uh, there weren't even any orcs. It's just a horrible, horrible joke. I'm going to sleep over here on this side of the carriage. You two go ahead and stay on the other side. BB is all in a tither. What kind of man did you marry? What is going on here? What are orcs and mutants? What kind of talk is this? She, you are pregnant. You cannot handle this sort of stress. You will lose the child. And she's just going on and on, just nattering. I thought you were just gaining weight. <laughs> You're retaining water. I was going to prescribe a diet, but. <laughs> so, uh, the carriage goes on. Um, and, and I the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> As the carriage takes off. No, I'm, I'm assuming we've been, like, at least a little bit moving for some time. Yeah, you've and, like, been moving for a little while. As soon as we've gone, like, busy 30 bit. yards, I'm just yakking out the side like a fucking, uh, oh, twisted metal weapon. Keep it down out there. I'm trying to nap. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, man, I got something that can help you with your stomach, and I'll, I'll get close enough and poke a mushroom. No, so oh, you. <laughs> Andre and Maximilian are like on edge. Their their heads and eyes are just darting side to side as you guys are carrying on down the road. They they are not comfortable whatsoever um, on this leg of the journey now. After they've learned that there was a mutant attack on the the caravan carrying the the hemp, I'm gonna get all of you to go ahead and make me a challenging awareness test. As you're also trying to keep an eye out for any sorts of dangers. To be fair, I was trying to that. Ah, oh, shit. Which explains why I failed that roll. Well, I'm on the roof running shotgun again, so good view up here. Riding blunderbuss. 
<laughs> yes. Fucking As they call nice, the book. Dude. <laughs> Is there actually a blunderbuss up here? <laughs> no. No, there isn't. Uh... Oh, okay. So, everybody who failed, you take... 10 points of mental peril as you are just like t- um, welled up with fear and you can't like really relax on this leg of the journey. And you also, because of the anxiety, you gain one corruption point. And corruption points are what leads to you becoming a mutant because you can gain. No! You can gain. There's tables you can roll on. Once you gain enough corruption, and you will become a mutant. Is that... So just in that center circle, we add one. Depending on what your threshold is. So this is if you failed. Oh, corruption, yes. If you failed, so you're the only one who didn't. So you're looking at the peril threshold on the right-hand side of your character sheet. You should have one, two, three squares there. A big one, and then three small ones. And depending on what your scores are in there, it's going to mean, it's going to determine how many little blips underneath you click in the peril condition track. So you've taken 10 points, right? I'm looking at Kozil's right now. That would put you into the second. That would put you into the 11. So you, you are imperiled on the peril condition track. All right. So we took 10 points and my peril threshold is a 7, 13, 19. That would put me in imperil? Yes. Got it. Oh, I get it. Okay, it's going left it's to a, right, counting yes, up. Yes, it's a track. Oh, okay. Exactly, exactly. So I have to be under 7 to be unhindered. Ex- yes. Okay, got it. Okay. You know, it's funny. I, I can never be anything but uh, oh, imperiled. That's right. You can't. I forgot I about that. I am just always lightly wounded and can never be fully healed. But for this, all of my shit is really, really hard to make me feel pain. I forgot about that. <laughs> that's hilarious. Because life is truly I really dig this class. <laughs> you were born for it. Um, Real set is getting quite drunk and into character now. So imperiled means you have no negative effects. So unhindered and imp- imperiled, no ill effects. Once you start going further down the track, that's when you see like ignore one skill rank, ignore two skill ranks, ignore three skill ranks. So right now it's not doesn't have any mechanical um, disadvantages. You're just getting that much closer to having bad things happen on your rolls. Because it's grim and perilous, as Blort said. So you make your way across the countryside. As you're carrying on, the the forests start to clear and you start to uh, make your way to surrounding farmlands. You do notice that it is currently harvest time. And harvest time is when you normally see workers out in the fields till like dusk or later working to get the crops up and off the fields. Um, There is no one currently working the fields as you make your way closer and closer to Vorberg. So you find that a little strange and also a little unnerving. You're like, oh, not good. Yeah, not not a good sign. the rapture has come and we are all that are left who are unworthy of the love of God. (laughs) You guys round a... Around the road, and you get your first glimpse of Vorberg. It's a striking village. Rounding the top of a wooded hill, you look down on a village nestled amongst fields and surrounded by a timber palisades. Behind it, a local mountain, well, more like a large hill, but the locals call it a mountain, um, is, is behind it. And you assume that this is the horned monk that uh, you were told about by Maximilian in the story that he regaled you in, that where they head the women in a a cave atop the horned monk. Um, it juts out suddenly from the ground. It's a very unusual hill slash mountain. It juts out suddenly from the ground, and although its sides are forested like other hills, the tree line ends below the summit. And you can only assume 
This is where it gets its nickname, the Horned Monk, because it's almost like a bald head at the top. So you guys make your way towards the village, and uh, you get to the you get to the Palisades, and there's a gate there, and Andre gets up to the gate, and he goes, Let us in! Open the gates! And you hear a voice behind him, Who's there? It's Andre and Maximilian! And, and so, Lord. And... <laughs> You hear the voice, thank the god emperor, Maximilian made it through! And the gate starts to open, and uh, <laughs> you guys are brought into the village. Did they say god emperor? Thank the god emperor. Oh, okay, I thought they were referring to this swine man, Max, as the god emperor. <laughs> no, 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 really they were thinking... Disappointed the... with the religious situation that... we have found ourselves. <laughs> that would be oh, heresy. No, they were thinking you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh, Blort's here. So you guys are brought into the village and the, the gates are shut quickly behind you, like immediately. The coach is soon surrounded by a crowd of scared villagers. You can see people coming in and they're 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 all kind of like they're they're in disbelief that Maximilian's here. They're looking at the group of you, like, who are these guys like? And uh they're they're kind of standoffish and lots of whispers and pointing going on. Maximilian gets down off his horse and uh leaves the group of you behind and he walks over to a to a, a large, rotund, kind of goofy-looking man, and he starts uh, chatting with him. Let's see, I, I think I have a picture of him. Uh, da, da, da. This this guy. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> As I said, he's a rotund, goofy-looking guy. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, that this is... gentleman is incredibly endearing to me. <laughs> That's my next haircut right there, man. Something about his <laughs> widow's peak and his several chins makes me aroused. I mean, it's really only two chins because the second chin is so big it could not turn into Can a third. Can you not see that the central initial chin is split into two little butt cheek chins? <laughs> All right, now we need to look at this picture again. Yeah. Those are proper jowls. Um... <laughs> And shortly after, a, a, a man in his, uh, looks like his early to mid-twenties makes his way over as well. And you look at him, he's got a, uh, a passing resemblance to, uh, to Maximilian. And that's uh, that gentleman there. And the, two, the three of them, I apologize, not the two of them, the three of them are, are deep in conversation. And suddenly the, the goofy looking guy leaves and Maximilian makes his way over. With the uh, the younger man, the man in his twenties, and comes over to the group of you and beckons you over. Here. Uh, come here, come here, please, please. Meet. Uh, this is my son. This is my son, uh, Waldman. He's been watching the village while we've been away. Waldman, what uh, what has been happening? Did uh, Heinrich? Did it? Did he? Did he? Did he come back to the village? He goes. Oh no, no, father. Uh, we haven't seen or heard from Heinrich. He had his 10-year-old son Dieter with him, and we've not seen or heard from them at all. He goes, well, have there, have there been signs? Uh, he, he hushes his breath and moves away from the crowd. Have there been signs of mutants around here? And Waldman sighs, and he shakes his head, no, but he goes, there's something I should, uh, I'd like to show you all. Please, please, come with me. We, uh, there's something outside the gates. You, uh, you need to see. Any, uh, emotions? I'm growing increasingly nervous regarding this entire situation. <laughs> he goes, uh, yeah, An man. Andre, please, please uh, accompany us. Yeah. And, uh, the group of you, please, come here, come here. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what has my, my son in this village so, so rattled. Oh, we've been through this before, haven't we, guys? They want to show us something on the other side of the walls. And the next thing we know, we're closed out of the village. <laughs> and we yeah, kill as old this time. To perform this time. You better not lock us out, man. That shit's not cool. It's like when the guy's like, you want to take this outside? And the other guy's like, yeah. So he goes outside. And then the first guy who said that closes the door, locks it. And he's like, you're dumb. I won this. So, so you guys are like, uh, you go first. You, go, you, you, you guys go first. And Maximilian and Waldman and Andre are just looking at the group. And you're like, fine. And Waldman's like, well, I, I got to show you 
to what I want to show you guys, so follow me. Before they walk forward, I'm shouting, like, I am, <laughs> this cannot be right. <laughs> this seems like a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Like, we're just standing outside this door, and they're like, no, no, please, you you go in first, for sure. We'll we'll go in right after you, but you go right in there. Waldwin's like, he's putting his hands, he's like, shh, shh, don't, don't upset these people anymore. I, I can't, I don't want to speak of what's out there. I just need, we need your help. And I need you to verify what you see here. If it checks out with what my, my father says you saw on the road. All right, man, but you got to keep all your clothes on when we go out there. Why would I disrobe? It's not the first time someone's asked me somewhere private. and Things took a turn for the weird, man. <laughs> I mean, you could disrobe. We wouldn't all mind. <laughs> hey, how's it going you from around here? Do you need a ride? <laughs> you are much more handsome than your father. Thank you. A little bit thinner, too, I've Walt noticed. Uh, you, you look strong. Uh, thanks. Hey, are you two, are you two related, man? Uh, you look sexually potent. <laughs> Maximilian's <laughs> my father. Thanks. But is he your daddy? Yes. <laughs> you can call me daddy, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a euphemism. I, I was being... A, obnoxious i'll be silent i, for the I know but waldman doesn't know that waldman's just like yeah he's my he's my he's my dad so do you yeah, lift do you lift he beckon you guys are beckoned outside with with andre maximilian and waldman where waldman takes you to the fields he goes it's 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 over here um i'm gonna warn you though it's it's rather gruesome and you guys uh round a corner around the wall uh, through the fields, and uh, you see strung up like scarecrows, the body of a man and a boy. And Maximilian goes, oh my god, it's Heinrich! Oh, and they're slaughtered, they're dead, they're cut open, disemboweled, and uh, it looks like they're put up here for display. For the, How did for the, the village oh. get them so high up in the air? The, the mutants? How did they get them so high up? How did the mole people get oh. them so high up in the air? <laughs> it looks like they were not accomplices. We might owe someone an apology. Perhaps this is a vast illusion. They're riddled with the same crudely barbed black arrows from the ambush. I, I know I'm short, but can illusion. we like poke them to see if they are an illusion or not? Yeah, well, Waldman and Andre goes, hey, give us a hand cutting the bodies down. We can't leave them up here. And I grab my bone saw and cut the rope. <laughs> there you go. The bodies flop, flop to the ground. Hey, man, I think they might be dead. I, of course they're dead. So wait, they're wait, actually... wait. Let me check. I might be able to save them. And I go up and I check to see if they're dead. Uh, yeah, you go over and you check them. And I'm not even going to make you like, need to have a check. They are deader than dead. Uh, they're cold. Rigor mortis is set in. They are they are very dead. Okay, so we might be able to do something I call CPR to save them. <laughs> nope, they're dead. They're dead. Sorry, it's too late. Waldman goes, listen, we we didn't cut them down earlier. They, we didn't know who or what was going on. We didn't know how many of them there were. There was barely any men left behind to protect the village. We closed the gates down and we just prayed that some someone or something reinforcements or something would come along so thank the stars that uh, my father has uh, hired the the four of you you look capable <laughs> kind of stutters I, like, the word strut a little bit <laughs> i'm bleeding <laughs> <laughs> you look like a capable bunch but uh we must uh we must take the bodies in and show respects to the dead his widow, uh, Enid, is most likely at uh, at the shrine to the God Emperor, praying for her dead husband and son. When did the bodies show up? How long were they there? Who noticed them first? It was the laborers, the hired workers. They were went out to the fields uh, in the morning, and they noticed them out there first thing in the morning. 
at tracks then. So he, this morning, yes, they were found. Carts have been gone for two days. Two days. All right. Was anything tied to the body? A message? A warning? Some sigil, perhaps? Yeah, they're looking over the bodies, and Andre's looking over with you. You can go ahead and make a make a an awareness check. Make a standard awareness test. Ooh, you succeed. <laughs> Anybody can if you want. You look over the, the bodies. You don't see anything unusual or any markings or anything, but you do notice Waldman, when you're speaking of mutants and such, you notice him fiddling with a talisman around his neck. While you guys are studying the bodies and whenever mutants are brought up and the loss of loved ones is mentioned there he's fiddling with this 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 copper and silver wire intertwined talisman it it forms a crude figure does it mean anything to me just common um vernacular you know regional lore does it mean anything well perhaps a folklore (laughs) you you can make a folklore check yeah, we don't have any. Do we have any casters? Do we have a caster in the group? Yep, that'd be you me. You can go ahead and make me a challenging incantation test. I'll I'll point it out. To have oh. This make sense. Oh, I thought that was your roll. Oh, he did not make it. Okay. Yeah, nothing really stands out to you. But um, Sando, you... I think you're the only one that passed your roll, aren't you? Oh, no. You and... Someone else. I don't see it anymore. You had two rolls? No, the folklore. Yeah, you're the only one. You don't recognize or recall any sorts of stories that would be t- um, connected to this for local folklore. Um... You know that the people in these regions are superstitious. They have a lot of strange traditions, such as, you know, impregnating a bride before getting married and things like that. So it's, you're not at all surprised and it's not uncommon to see people have sorts of these sorts of trinkets that they carry around with them due to their superstitions. All right. Well, I'll be blunt about it then. I will say, just an interesting talisman you have there. To what god are you praying? He he kind of stops and looks at you and it was... He goes, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't even think about it. I didn't realize I was doing that. It's... My mother made this for me. My my mother who... I don't know if you've heard, but there was a, it was a terrible attack on the village about uh, a dozen years ago and the women folk were all locked away in a cave to protect them and they there were no signs of them when we returned for them after the the orcs and the mutants were chased away and this is the last thing i have that my mother gave me and uh this this horrific sight just reminds me of her i just clap them on the back incredibly depressing (laughs) grim and perilous He goes, uh, shall we get the bodies, uh, back into the, to the village? And perhaps one of us should, should notify the widow. And also the, the local pastor is the brother of Heinrich. We should, uh, let him know what has transpired here. That his brother and nephew have passed. So they, they lift up the bodies and they cover them up. They t- one of uh, Andre takes off. He's he's got a cloak on. He takes it off and wraps up the boy. And Maximilian takes off his coat and puts it over as best he can over Heinrich. And they carry the bodies back inside the the village. They look to you for help. The four oh, of yeah. you. 
So you guys well, get. I mean, back. I could help, but I'm a little short. You you are a little short. That's not. Hey, man. I'm just an old man, man. I don't know, like, <laughs> my sciatica and stuff, man. You're you're. It how old are you? I've seen it. He's got seventy four. Oh, you are an old man. Yeah. Um. So as you're walking back, Maximilian says to Andre. Listen, if, if if people ask, I think it's best that we say it was bandits. Bandits did this. Let's no 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 talk of mutants. And Andre nods his head in agreement. I'm sure the bodies have been there long enough for t- tongues to wag at this point. Everyone saw the arrow. Yes, lies are the source of all evil. I do not see any <laughs> reason to hide this information from your townsfolk. Wald- Waldman goes, listen, there's been a lot of talk amongst the laborers that have found him. Rumors are... Are spreading all over town, but let's try to keep morale up. We've been through enough in the past regarding mutants. So people here, they don't want to hear that. If you're asked, please just allude. Please allude to bandits. I am an honest man. (laughs) Are you asking us to lie again, man? Yes. Like, you're dishonest and stuff. In this instance, I'm asking you to lie, Maximilian. He's getting, like, agitated. He's he's very upset with the death of his friend, you can tell. Maximilian. I I understand. You you should not always tell the patient when they are dying. Well, would you rather your townsfolk be unprepared and the people that look up to your son be unknowing of the dread to come? Maximilian does not know what to make of you. He goes, please just, just tell them, don't don't mention mutants if you can, or don't even bring it up. Hey man, I got a great idea. If you're worried about the morale of your town, what is that? <laughs> you know, they say that music heals the soul and stuff, man. <laughs> Are Maybe you a, uh, you a musician? No, He's man. just been listening to a lot of Third Eye Blind lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I knew some Third Eye Blind. I could sing you guys right now, but... I wish you would step back from that Oh, lady, shit. My friend. I had could. that song in my head, but I'm like, that's not it. All the lies you've been living in. Wow. There we go. I'm you, not continuing that. You but... know more than me, but okay. Yeah. Uh, no, and my... I do not want to say me again. I, I would understand. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, karaoke. Okay. Notorious DMG karaoke that night. Is the max <laughs> amount allowed. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so you guys make your way back inside the gates, and Maximilian turns to the group. He goes, uh, Listen. You could choose to leave in the morning if you like. Uh, for everything you've done, let me put you up at uh, the local tavern, the Cowardly Orcs. My good friend Horst, he was the gentleman I was speaking with earlier when I first came in the gates, is uh, the one who runs it. Why don't you make your way there? Your room board will be on me for the night. I can't send <laughs> anyone out. out uh, Wait, just one night? Well, it's up to you. You're, you're welcome to stay. We can take a look at this further in the morning. I would be grateful if you stayed in my village to help get to the bottom of this, but uh, if you want to move on, I, I guess I could. I would understand. <laughs> I would understand. You, your, your man, Andre, speak of it. Your village is ill fit to withstand an assault by these. Uh, Maximilian, yeah, he thinks you're not wrong. These men are not equipped to handle such things. Let us talk more of it in the morning. Speak with my friend Horst at the Cowardly Orcs. And, uh... Does our room have a balcony? You don't know yet. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> Is that Let's find too? out. So, you, yeah, you make your way uh, through the village. You're, you're pointing in the direction of the Cowardly Orcs. O-R-X, by the way. In true Swyhander fashion. Ooh. Where everything's a play on Warhammer. 
you make your way in that direction. As you're walking around, you do see a, a few things of, of, of interest. You, uh, you, you do see the shrine of the god emperor uh, in the far end of the village. Um, you see Maximilian take his cart towards a, lead it towards a large house or mansion. And you could only assume that that's where Maximilian Steger lives. And you see a bunch of like shanties and tents, which uh, looks like a, like it would be maybe the laborers quarters. There's a bunch of dirty looking people milling about. Um, but you make your way to the cowardly orcs. You open the door and inside it's it's quite busy. Uh, behind the bar, you do see that uh, goofy rotund man again. Horst. Let's bring him up there again with his double Quit bum chin. Quit putting that image on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. He's looking into your soul. My wife's going to walk by and wonder what I'm doing over here. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm going to hack into your mainframe and remove this image from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, such a good Grim and Perilous image, though, for a character. Dude, that it's is perfect. Grim and Perilous for in real life, Seth, not even Blort. Like, <laughs> knowing that this exists is stressful. This is on my laptop somehow. This is malware. This is illegal. <laughs> this is illegal. <laughs> oh, man. You make your way in. It's quite busy. You see him behind the bar, and uh, he recognizes the group of you. There's also a uh, a young woman back there. She looks like she's in her, her early 20s, and she's milling about. And um, he... he, he, he calls out to you oh you're you're maximilian's friends come come on come in come in you you've been looked after for the night please what can what can i get you my name is my name is horst this is my wife lizette he points to the the young the young girl why does everyone in your town marry children he go he <laughs> just that's the first thing you ask him also i would like an ale uh, sure, one ale. He, um, I don't know if you've uh, if you've you've heard of what what happened here years ago. All of the the women, they uh, no, I heard it just doesn't correlate. Disappeared. Directly. This is why uh, my mind. When you well, when you're walking around this village, you'll notice that many of the women here are are younger. There's girls who have been born since the incident, but we've had to take wives from surrounding villages and and in the area so a lot of the women that you do see here in town are are quite a bit younger than than us listen wait, listen guys through my through my ale can i be honest with you that is the worst you don't think this was some large plot for all the men in the village to get rid of their wives do you? <laughs> to get younger wives stepford wives <laughs> This is just some deep fucking operation ball and chain bullshit. Perhaps these aren't mutants at all. Perhaps these are angry wives come back to extract revenge. But where would they have gained the powers of the mole, Sandow? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, perhaps they were all shrews. Oh, and here's... <laughs> oh. Where? <laughs> You're a ruthless animal. <laughs> <laughs> He oh. saw the pun and he took it. He I went for it. An actual fucking spit take on this. Oh, man. that hurts my my midsection. Oh. How could you say that? Like, You're welcome. You're here all week. Dip deal. your bartenders. <laughs> oh. So yeah, Horst is a rather goofy man, and he he seems very uh, he's very full of himself. He goes well the the tale from twelve years ago. I myself, I personally personally slayed. 20 of these orcs and mutants and he points to a sword that hangs above the door and I did it with that there with my very blade could I borrow that in case we need it for a future <laughs> orcs no that is I will use it should uh should things go awry here I right right of course of course my he bad. puts his hands on his large belly he goes I was I was in much better shape 12 years ago and I was quite a beast on the battlefield Ah, uh, yes, the greatest of warriors are known to have the largest bellies. Hey, man, don't be hard on yourself. You're still in a shape, dude. Thank Just... you. Yes, hair is a shape. Thank you. Yeah. That means I a lot coming from more. an elderly man. Circle, but, you know, 
pear is a pear is generous for you. I hope you understand that. Sure, sure. Hey, uh, listen, I'm going to uh, let me get you some food, and uh, I'll be right back. Uh, my wife here. Don't forget the ale. My my wife Lizette will uh, will get you the ale, and he calls her over, and she greets the the group of you. And how old is she? I asked her if she has early twenties. She has a what card? If she has a taps card, you can't get one if you're not 21. I just being a fucking retard. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's in her early 20s. She goes, oh, I've heard that Maximilian brought you uh, with him from Swansea. Welcome, welcome. I, I, I've also heard that there's been some some trouble uh, outside the gates. Oh yeah, nothing we can't handle. A uh, quick question: How long have you been married? Oh, we've only been married for a couple years now couple years so horst he's he's a great man you should hear the tales of his exploits from years ago he was apparently he's he was the slayer of orcs and mutants i'm i'm quite i'm very lucky to be married. interesting interesting so i'm sure he gets along with your mom then well my my mom is over in swansea and we don't visit very often oh so she doesn't live here no she does not live here well, that's good, because it seems like she wouldn't have many friends over here her age. Yes. <laughs> you are right. What seems... a way to bring the temperature to the room, Dad. Yeah, she goes, well... I have no response to that. I'm I'm sure you, you've you heard about what took place here, but Everyone my husband, was he was, like he was a great warrior. Cataclysm was a good excuse for the terrible cataclysm you all perform <laughs> upon yourselves every week with these horrible, horrible <laughs> child marriages, like those things get to even each other out. Like, I understand the desire <laughs> to continue your lineage and not just take a 15-year sex break, but honestly, <laughs> like, life is so fleeting and futile. Why does it matter so much that you marry a nine-year-old just for this? This is dreadful. I hate this town. <laughs> You start whipping yourself. <laughs> I'm whipping myself and crying. <laughs> the blade that he drew our attention to, does it actually look like it was used or is it look um, like it's just a piece? Why don't you why don't you make uh He killed What's that? He said he killed like twenty orcs with it, right? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and make me uh a routine scrutinize? You're looking it up. Add it up on the wall there. It's hanging above the door. Yes, and I've slain a thousand dragons. You've slain a thousand mole men. Oh, critical success. Yeah, Sandow, you, you're like, this blade, though it does look like it, there's uh, like some chips and things taken out of the, the steel, this is not from battle. It looks like someone just kind of messing around and hitting like fence posts and other swords and just kind of goofing around with it. It does. This does not look like a battle-used weapon. Right. Guys, more and more I'm liking my theory about the wife conspiracy here. <laughs> uh, makes sense that there's not a battle axe over his bar, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get information from them, but they're locked down. This is like a vault. I did not detect a pun about women in that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> so Is she still here? here? She's still standing there. She's like looking at the group of you. She goes, um, did, uh, I heard, I heard rumor of Heinrich and his son. Can you speak to that? Ooh, I yeah, that you don't want to talk about Heinrich. Probably a job for Sandow. <laughs> yeah, and man. I yeah, walk Sandow. away not, sipping my beer. <laughs> we're not I supposed to talk about this. Is going to make a uh, an announcement about that in the the oh. very near. Can you can you can you confirm anything? Well, I mean, you're not Ken, are you? No, no, no. I I am I do not respect Heinrich, she says. I I'll tell you one thing about Heinrich. At least my husband, and she points over to Horst. Never God. beat never beat me black and blue. 
<laughs> Sandell stares at her, takes his cap off, looks down, and and sadly shakes his head and says, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> So you're, you're, you're learning more. Heinrich is disliked by Andre for beating his child. And you're now learning that he, well, there's rumor that he probably beat his wife too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heinrich is, sounds like a wonderful person that it totally deserved like everything that happened to him. Single individual citizen of this place is a true terror of the earth. <laughs> she goes, um, has anybody, has anybody told his wife or, or, or brother? The, the local pastor. I don't know. Has anybody picked that. her up from daycare yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Yeah. That would be up to Max. That would be up to Max to, to say something. Well, if he's as terrible as what they said, maybe we should pick up like a, a bottle of champagne to give her when we tell her <laughs> the news. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yeah, maybe she goes. Yeah, great maybe. news! You're back on the market. Maybe <laughs> you're young and at the back ripe the age of fourteen, you can have a second divorce. <laughs> um, she goes. You know what? Maybe she could use a drink, old Enid. But um, keep it away from Pastor Wilhelm, will you? He's uh, she kind of makes a little sippy sippy motion. You know? Did he you went- say Pastor Wilhelm? Pastor Wilhelm, yes, the Heinrich's brother. He, um, you know, he went through a lot here, but so did everybody else twelve years ago. You don't see, you don't see my husband fall apart. She gets hey, all, she gets all judgy. Did you, did you say old Enid? Yeah, I believe that that was hyperbole or sarcasm. Yeah, <laughs> hyperbole. Like... <laughs> old Enid. Yes, all of the women. You notice this as you're Old walking through the village. For a woman is of age. You, you you noticed as you're walking through the village earlier. You, now that it's brought up and it's mentioned, you're kind of like, yeah, all the women here are really young. I remain silent in real life and in character. Horst comes back with your food. He goes, oh, uh, well, you've been chatting with my my wife. Uh, I hope everything is well, and she. Hasn't talked your ear off, have you, honey? And she goes, oh, no, no, no. And she scuttles away and goes back to serving other patrons. She's hey. been a great hostess. Oh, yeah. excellent, excellent. It's fine, man. I only got one ear anyway, so she can't talk that one off. Yes, I was teaching her her times tables. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he goes, um, so, uh, so Max, Max mentioned some trouble on the road. He didn't really get into it. Um, what can you, what can you say? What did you guys see outside the gates? Some trees. Couple dead bodies. Just a couple. I believe. I, I whispered to Sandow, like, are we telling people he said not to mention mutants but to mention orcs would the orcs be included in the same group as mole men could i reference them in this conversation well he did say that the good innkeep here was his good friend that's right i i am i'm one of his closest friends max is a true hero he saved this village years ago Max is the best man for the job. He's going to save us all. It's fantastic. Oh, He's did Max fan- have your back when you were killing all those orcs? He did. He, he was in awe of my my ability on the battlefield. Sandow just shakes his head sadly and says, You I are do all not trust in so much this trouble. This man is <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I am the great slayer of orcs and mutants. You might say that uh, they ran for their lives after they saw me handle that sword there on the battlefield. I I think we need to have, like, a team meeting of sorts. <laughs> right, uh, Innkeep, uh, you, there's a room for us here, I understand. Max said uh, you would put us up. Yeah, he, he calls, he goes, uh, boy! Boy, get over here. 
And yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Klaus, uh, you see this kid oh, scuttle out. Uh, he's, mm, I'd say he's in his teens. Uh, scuttle out a, a boy with like a kind of dirty, ma- uh, mangy, unkept red hair. Uh, he comes on over to you. Get a look at him. He's, you can tell he's, he's, he's missing a, he's a few bricks short of a load. He's, um, looks like he might be a, a little challenged mentally and he comes over. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh, Horst, what, what, what can I do for you? Cause, uh, show these, show these men to the room. Klaus. Oh, 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 okay. And he, he leads you up some stairs and to, uh, to the a one large, with the balcony, please. A large room. Uh, shared room. And he goes, there's, there, there's no balconies here. I, I, I'm sorry. I guess I won't have to step back from that ledge, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I would understand. Shows, shows you to your room and is, 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 is that all? And waits. He doesn't really like make eye t- contact with any. Is this the best room you have? It is. You, you've been given the best room. And we have to share it. Yes. I mentioned that I just wanted him to notice. What did you want him to notice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question because I do not want to derail this any further. <laughs> so he uh, he scuttles away after he shows you the room. Okay, gentlemen, I am going to be quite honest with you. I've had several ales. I've been spun around about on the wagon spoke for some time now. <laughs> We've been introduced to a great many characters who have told us a great many lies, and I don't think it has gotten past <laughs> many of our collective wisdoms that the lies are being told to all of us. And I just want to know exactly where we all stand so we can move forward as a unit instead of as an uncoordinated team. I agree. We should absolutely cut ties with all the lies. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> I was going for it and you took it from me. <laughs> I, I mean, if you don't want to see me again. No, but like, straight up, in character, what I'm trying to say as Blore is like, this session and last, like towards the end especially, we basically got introduced to like, like seven people now who all have interests that on the surface are aligned, but they are all giving us very strangely conflicting, like very shady versions of the information that each other have, you know? Mm -hmm. And like where, where are we standing as a team right now? Like, I mean, mean, who do any of you believe we should trust? If any of these people, I don't think we should trust any of them. Uh, I am exactly in a story. I have zero faith that Maximilian, nor Horst, nor Andre, none of them have any form of honesty in their bodies. I'm not even sure I trust you, so I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely don't trust them. Wise not to trust me. Yes, I know. But still. Is the mystery not intriguing? This would make a good story. A ballad, even. No, I certainly agree. I believe that... I believe firmly that good things can happen on this cursed earth, but it seems as though we are going to be the ones to make that happen. We will not be witnesses. We will be the cause of of whatever heroism is performed in this town. Which is scary, looking at the bunch of you. Yeah, yeah, that was it could my go primary way. point is that there's a man on mushrooms and my open exposed back wounds <laughs> Sandow's high collar and purse and Waldolandis's I don't even know what just grinning with his bone saw yeah you just like used to be a doctor but also you're unemployed and in a time where doctors were basically gods so like really how far because you truly have fallen to be in this situation <laughs> I'm just not very motivated, okay? I could have my own practice if I wanted. Well, I mean, I could quit smoking cigarettes if I wanted, but I, <laughs> you know, haven't because I don't want to. And Blort starts smoking cigarettes. <laughs> don't push me, man, okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to push you. I am just saying 
like we as a cohesive unit have decided in, a, in this small meeting to trust no one not even ourselves agreed trust no one correct okay yeah man are we gonna Your try eyes and... open yeah Your ears open and let us find what we might yeah, By Santa, the way, we are, we are all your personal advisors. Whatever you wish upon our group to do or not do, you simply need to say it. And uh, you have on that, times as much money as us. <laughs> on that same thought, Sandow, um, you're a bit behind on our allowance this week, and I know it's not a big deal, but like, you know, I I got some bills that need to be paid. I want some candy. <laughs> You sound Bruh. like all of the uh, brides in this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, I, you I, if you're running late, it's fine. I just, I, I just, you know, sooner rather than later would be nice. I don't know. Giving you coin in this town, hmm, there's only so much you could spend it on. I Are mean, you I... not the famous candy boy? I simply wish for some sweet treats. <laughs> if you're gonna be our sugar daddy, we we need some sugar. That's all I'm saying. You're the sugar daddy. I he want is, to be he, a little he, sugar boy. He is yeah. he is the face of a candy company, right? That's where you're going with this. He's the Gerber sweet candy meats. baby. The sweet meats. Sweet the meats. the famous sugar boy. <laughs> That's what he's referring to. Exactly. <laughs> he went from sugar boy to sugar daddy for all of us. <laughs> Well, I suppose this is a new town, and the bargain was payment in every new town. You got me. Yeah, man. I even gave you the setup for a performance earlier, man. Did it on any one place. Here's your brass penny, any each of you. Age women. I like to think that Blort accepts payment from Sandow in the form of, like, whatever the Zweihander equivalent of, like, a single M&M would be. <laughs> a, sweet, a single sweetmeat. A singular sweetmeat, if they did come in, like, single dollar packages of 100. <laughs> a whole new line called Little Sandows. <laughs> Conveniently wrapped, about 2 billion calories per. At the end of the commercial, uh, your famous line, you eat it and you're like, these are real Sam Wow, am I right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am honestly just sitting in front of my laptop, rambling like a drunk man right now. And I'm gonna, apologize. I'm gonna flash the picture of Horst on your screen again. Stop putting no. it on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the plan here, fellas? Well, this is what? This is early evening. Yeah, it's it's early. We'll say it's six, seven p.m. around there. <clears throat> I mean, if right. it's past five, it's time to get drunk. Exactly. The ale house will hold everything we need. And Maximilian's Both paying. liquid be... and in knowledge. Gentlemen, I I have a small strategy I would suggest that we place upon ourselves before we get too intoxicated. I propose that we draw straws or roll dice or something and determine one of us who will stay sober. But oh, act, you, you all act. know Sandow doesn't drink, so... Oh, shit, I forgot all about that. Okay, well, you act drunk, and, like, we'll all act drunk in the bar and try to pick up some information with some, like, you know, subversary. Yeah, I'm not gonna act drunk, because uh, the one thing you can't amputate is depression. <laughs> nice <laughs> one, dude. <laughs> Do you oh, say that in character? Because dark. Glort would say along the lines of, whip the fuck out of your back, it'll make it better. <laughs> That's what the ale's for. I numb it. <laughs> ah, you're whipping your insides. <laughs> He's whipping his liver, man. Oh, <laughs> You've been a naughty, naughty liver. <laughs> I'm joking. My flagellation is not a sex thing. I'm chaste. I'm, I've never lined with the woman. <laughs> that is not obvious at all. <laughs> I know. I'm so dashing. <laughs> He's eating a bag of candy and bleeding on the floor. I'm a 66-year-old four-foot-tall <laughs> man with bleeding wounds on his back permanently. I, I, I'm irresistible. Are you really The only 66? thing I've eaten in the last four days is some candy. <laughs> and some mushrooms. 
Are you 66 How years is old? everyone so old? <laughs> well, because that's so much time has passed since my birth. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just looking at your character sheet. Oh, don't Come on, me. it's a grim and perilous world. If you've lived this long, you've got to have some life skills. <laughs> my life skill is determining the truth and espousing it with no social knowledge of the impacts of my actions. So you guys hear a bang at the door and you hear a, a female voice come through. It's a, a familiar female voice. It's Lizette again. She goes, uh, you haven't touched your meals. Or, or did you, did you still want them? Oh, I'm oh yes. Sorry. Yes. Bring them in. Yeah, oh, man. Th they're down at the bar. I didn't, I didn't bring them with me. Is this a oh, fucking be down. joke? How did you not bring them to us? <laughs> Hey, man, it's okay. I'll go eat them downstairs, man. You can't even blame her. She's like seven. <laughs> there goes the tip. <laughs> oh, You guys are way more hung up on the, the young woman aspect of this than the last group are us. <laughs> okay. I make sure the Sandow does not tip because this is horrible service. And a horrible town. Every a horrible village. Anyone in this bar like lays down a tip, me and like Waldalanus are on the fucking prowl to like snatch it off a table. <laughs> <laughs> they do not deserve that. <laughs> oh man. Okay. She goes, Well, I could I could have Klaus bring up your food if if you like. Oh well. well maybe down. he knows how to serve us. <laughs> Don't be rude directly to her. Do it behind her back like me. <laughs> <laughs> Chomp, chomp, chomp. I'm sorry, I haven't had my ale yet. All right, so you guys head back downstairs. You, your food's waiting for you, as is your ale, and Horst welcomes you back again. And uh, yeah, a few more, a few more people have made their way into the tavern. It looks like a bunch of the laborers have come in for drinks, and it's uh, yeah, you eat your food. It's delicious. You have your your ale and. People are like looking and staring at the group of you and, you, you know, your outsiders they are not too sure what to make of you, especially with all the news that's going around town right now and the rumors. You're kind of getting the stink eye from everybody. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'll eat and then afterwards I want to kind of meander around and just kind of ask, you know, like, if anyone has any idea, like, what's going on, like, hey, man, like, what's going on around here, man? Everyone's really bummed out. To, like, the laborers? Or villagers? Yeah. 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 See if any of those field laborers maybe have any additional information, since they're the ones that saw the one asshole and his son. Right, right. He goes, well, you go up to a laborer and he's sitting there and <clears throat> they're kind of drinking and they look at you like, oh, what do you want? Huh? What are you, what are you, what are you asking us, old man? Hey, man, like, what's been going on around here, man? People seem really tense. Ah, there's, uh, there's rumors of bandits and other things going on. Well, I don't know. Listen, all I care is that I get paid my money. To take care of this harvest and I move on to the next place. Man, you're like not local, man. No, I'm hired help. It's harvest. You realize that you also are not local, Kozel. <laughs> yeah, man, but I don't work here and stuff. I'm glad I'm glad you pointed that out. <laughs> Your social acumen confuses me. <laughs> That's hilarious. It confuses me too, man. So, like, are the roads usually safe, man? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's this talk, there's this rumor of these things that took place here years ago. We don't know. Like, listen, if they were so heroic, how come their women got snatched up? Here, here. Um, but man. Let, and then he goes, well, well if, let me ask you this though. If you had the chance to marry over again, wouldn't you pick a nice uh, young thing? Huh? Huh? Here, here. <laughs> I strike the man that said that. <laughs> really? With the back of your hand or your like, cat of nine tails? 
I've like been casually like rubbing some balm on my back, but I still have my cat of nine tails out. And as soon as he's like, yeah, you know, dude, fuck some kids. I hit him as hard as I can in the face with it. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> he, uh, he kind of falls back. He's been drinking and uh, he, uh, he jumps up and his buddies all jump up too. And uh, what, what's, what are you, what are you doing? Hey, hey, what are you doing, pal? I don't know. You think it's cool fucking kids? You want to get the hell out of here before I whip you all up and down your body? <laughs> Standing there bleeding. And then uh, with that horsed, horsed, what, what, what's going on? And he, he, he waddles over to the door and he grabs the sword down. He goes, hey, I don't want no trouble. So he's swinging around. He's swinging around like you can tell he's got no, he has no idea how to use this thing. I don't want no trouble in here. You, uh, you hired help. Get out of here. These, these I are, dropped these my bone saw. These are my, these are my guests of honor. And he starts, like, the waving the sword around. here is the pedonormativity, but uh, I guess that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So they go, hey, 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 put, leave, we, we don't want no trouble. Get put the, get that sword out of our face. And they, they make their way out. They leave after the little, little brush up. And Yeah, you better run. I scared him off. Don't worry, <laughs> guys. Horse, or it's like, what, 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 what happened? Why, why do they all of a sudden... If Jump I told you why I hit that man in the face, I'd have to do it to you as well. So I'm going to uh, use my Fifth Amendment right to not do that. <laughs> oh, Horst, answer me this. Why does the town need to hire migrant work this way? Oh, there's there's not enough people living here come harvest time. I'm sure you saw the massive fields surrounding the village uh, that really, it's it's... The hemp trade, which keeps us keeps us in business, so we do need help uh, every harvest to uh, to bring in the crops. So these are I all do enjoy my hemp. Wait, man, those were all hemp fields out there. They they were hemp fields. Man, I gotta go back out there. I'll catch you guys <laughs> <Yeah>. later. <laughs> what, sir? What did you ask, Sando? I, I asked if uh, all these fields, these are all Maximilian's fields. They they are they are Max's fields now. Now you get a good idea of 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 his wealth. He oh. and Horace just kind of shakes it. He is Max is is a great man. He is going to do great things for this village now that things have picked up. And he's found a wife. He will be happy like me. How long hey. has Maximilian's family been here? They, oh, they have been here for ages. I'm. Did you see the big house over in the corner? That is, that's their mansion. His family, uh, th those fields have been handed down generation after generation. Hey, man, trickle down economics doesn't work, man. How old does Horst look? Horst looks, hmm, that's a good question. Older than Maximilian? We better see that they're, picture again. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> They're roughly the same age, I want to say. Uh, Horst looks like he's in his early to mid 40s, whereas Maximilian was in his like late 40s. So they're not that far off in age. You could, you would. Uh, Do you know enjoy. Maximilian's father or his uh, mother? I knew both of them. Oh, and was it uh, was their family? Um... Which side of the family did the money come from, if I might be so bold? The money? Well, it came from uh, came from his father's side. Oh, the father's side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I know Maximilian is... Him and his bride are expecting that as well, and I pray for them to have a son to inherit the, the wealth as well, just like Maximilian did from his father. Oh, so his father's passed on. Yes, both sadly, his father and mother have passed on. His uh, wretch of a sister has come back to the village and lives in the house with them, though. Unfortunately, that's uh, the only other family that uh, Max has here. And did Max's father pass during the problem with the orcs? No, thank goodness he passed. Thank the god emperor he passed before said events okay uh just continue with a bit of small talk just trying to get the lay of the land figure out where the money came from right 
while we're getting the lay of the land, I'm going to ask about this hemp. Is there anywhere we could get um, some medical hemp? <laughs> some medical grade hemp? I mean, I normally use ale to numb the pain, but I, I want something else to get me through this semi-charm kind of life. Oh, baby. no. Baby, baby. Um, Yes, course. He goes, well, I'm sure Maximilian could um could help with that in the, in the morning. Maximilian, got it. I will remember that. You know, for medical purposes, I'm a doctor. Yes. Oh, you are. Oh, it's nice to have a doctor passing through the the village. Yeah. If you have any problems, I am happy to help amputate any problems. Hmm. For sure. For sure. Um, I'm gonna go back to my business here i uh unless you guys have anything else you're curious about no one one last question sure um, yes would you mind uh later this evening if i were uh to entertain your crowd um no you're an entertainer you're yes no that would be that would be fine just Please don't cause any trouble again, well, like like you did a moment ago. Again? Oh no, no, that that was completely on them. I have no idea what set them off. Yeah, that was entirely on them. I... <laughs> yes, no, please, please feel free to perform for us. And he goes back to uh, to serving people and cleaning mugs and things like that. And uh, I proclaim that I offer free mole re removals for the entire night. <laughs> free mole removals all around. Yay. Nobody really. First uh, round on me. Nobody really reacts to your offer. <laughs> I, I can only do so much. I can offer them the path, but I can't make them go down it. <laughs> As you like brandish your bones on the air. Free mole removals for everyone. <laughs> Yes. What else would you like to do on this evening in the village of Vorburg? I mean, I, I'm i going to do the same thing I do every evening and just blackout drunk and then wake up in the morning to find someone tell me that I was hired for a job. <laughs> so often happens that way. Um, so in the last village, I took some time learning their local uh, stories uh, as part of the entertainment there. Yes. And so a lot of the brides here come from that town. So yes, uh, I'm going to spend some part of the night uh, relaying some of the stories that I heard from the other town. See who comes forward, wants to talk about the town, that sort of thing, if anyone. Talk about Swansea or this town? Yes, Swansea. Swansea, the town you came from. Right. I'm thinking that some of these uh, new, newly minted brides here might be missing their homes and might be a little bit more free to chat once uh, some memories of home come to mind. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I likes it. Let me look at your character sheet. What do we got? Is there like an entertain skill? Not really. I've been using like like charm because charm is like for a crowd. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go or ahead. Rumor could could be done that way too. Yeah, yeah. make one. make me a routine charm. That's fine. Okay. Do I want to click this link in the chat while we're streaming? I'm scared. That Seth posted. Live dangerously, man. I don't. I don't know. Uh, do I? Oh yeah. <laughs> do I get my modifier for being of a higher social class than the people in the room? Yes. Oh, keep rubbing it in. <laughs> wow, even with an 82. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you get up there and you perform and you start uh, telling tales of Swansea and days gone by and speaking of folklore and traditions. And uh, Lizette uh, eventually steps forward. She goes, oh, that was that was beautiful. It reminds me reminds me of my hometown and everything. I, 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 I sure do miss it. I forget about Swansea since I've been here for the last few years well sit and uh, how did you become uh, married to the good bartender here we know Maximilian's story we just came from his wedding 
Well, Horst came to the village seeking a bride, and tales of his heroics spread while he was there, and I was just so, so taken by his his bravery. Um, and kind of in a lower voice, you know, kind of meant for just her. And say, so were the suitors in Swansea um, not as appealing? Well, uh, Maximilian offered a, a, a very large bride price for his. Well, and she, was, she lowers her tone as well. She goes, well, Horst, Horst, uh, on top of being a hero, he also has this, this very well-performing tavern that he owns. He makes he makes some good money here. So it's been a good life since you've been here. What these last last two couple years? Of years? Yes, yes, it's been a very good life being married to Horst. Does he ever speak of his uh, his lost wife and the uh, the troubles that happened around that? He doesn't bring it up too much. Um, if he does, he just regales. Everyone with the tales of his heroics during that that fateful day. Oh, so he hasn't let the sadness of losing his prior wife interfere with uh, your lives together. He is a good man. He is a good man. Hmm. But uh, living in his home and, and under his roof, uh, surely you have seen some mementos of his past, uh, his past wife. Surely such a good man would have loved her as much. Yes. Oh, yes. And she's she's in agreement. She's not picking up on your. <laughs> he is. He is right. a good man. He treats me well. Okay, so I'm not really picking up that she's. Uh, she is trying to wax over no some inconsistencies. She's no, she's. She like seems that. very uh, taken with her husband. Okay. She seems quite happy with where she's at. Yeah, that's just kind of where I was going with it, just trying to make her think about mm. some things that are inconsistent. Right? Gotcha, gotcha. Can gotcha. I whisper to Sandow, like, should we tell her that her husband is engaging in stolen valor? <laughs> oh, no. Valor. I, I will I will shake my head, no. Um, she, she, she seems to be uh, quite taken with her husband. There's no... There's no reason to tarnish that for something so petty. Every man boasts. Let if him you, have his boast. If you believe that he is of relatively quality character, I will not tear down the facade of his previous life. Well, his new wife, as young as she seems, seems to be quite happy. And she found it was of her free choice, apparently. He was a much better prospect than the young men in her village. Let's not hold his character against her. I hope he doesn't hold his character against her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm literally here all week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, that was my attempt to try and, and weasel something out that might have been she... not so in the public. <laughs> right. She goes, well, you know, you could always you could always ask around. Um, there's There's the grieving widow enid i'm sure you could uh, maybe approach her and ask well her. much like these tales that i have sung for you this night uh i make my uh bread and butter by learning the stories of other people and spreading them from town to town so it is part of my you don't uh think that you will take it as a forward too forward of a notion if I were to ask into these things. I mean, it is it is somewhat prying into a person's personal space, but it is for stories and songs that will live on. No, she's she's kind of taken aback with your your demeanor and the way you handle yourself. You're a much higher class than her, and you can tell that she does not want to... Uh, the way she handles herself when you speak to her, she doesn't want to, you know, offend you or anything. So she just, she just nods. Oh, yeah. No, don't worry, don't worry. I, uh, you, you are, you are a wonderful entertainer. The, the best we've seen in a long time. All right, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll thank her for the respite, go back to doing a little performing, and I'll look out to see if the person she was talking about showed. Not likely, but, you know. 
if she's there. Yes. No, um, it was mentioned previously that the the grieving widow would probably be at the shrine to the god emperor. The church, the local church. Right, something probably best checked in the morning then, seeing as the retinue is probably blind drunk by now. Yes, and we're also coming up at the end of our session. They're blind drunk, and we're at the two-minute warning. So, we can leave off there, in this weird, crazy, horrible town. This place is truly miserable. <laughs> I've had better ale. Here. Yes. When you say that, do you crack a smile to be in such a place of abject misery? It's 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 just like home, isn't it? Well, I mean, Blort is both melancholy and compassionate. So, like, I kind of focus on the darker, like, sadder things that wander through my real-life drunken mind. But I think at the same time, he also has, like, a base understanding of human emotions and understands that the people here are, like, suffering and not having a good time because a horrible, horrible thing happened to them. So like, so you connect to him better. Maybe not connect to him better, but like, I'm not just like excited that this place is a shithole, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's he's already started slapping people around. He's offended that people are as miserable as he is. Not mm -hmm. quite. I'm offended that these people have so easily accepted such a horrible existence. <laughs> well. That's kind of the setting. <laughs> Grim and perilous. It's how, how well, it's based, right. It's a retro clone of Warhammer, but how is Warhammer described? It's D&D &D covered in mud, blood, and shit. And that's what we're playing. It's Go us. Ter <laughs> terrible place. But that brings I... us to the end of our session. So we'll come back next week with the next part. Um... I don't think Steven's going to join us, unfortunately. He can't make it. Probably not. I'll try to, but I doubt it. We'll be a man only down. One capacity to heal. <laughs> drink I, for drink enough for me. I will do my best. There you go. Cool. I can uh, I can do some emergency healing, so hopefully yeah. we won't healed. be ass out. I mean, yeah. to be fair, I couldn't really heal. I could only amputate. Uh, we call that reverse healing. Right. Like necromancy. Exactly. Yeah. So, good night to everybody who tuned in and watched us. Thank you for joining us. We will be back next week with some more Zyana and the Notorious yeah. DMG. Uh, thank you, Matt, for putting together that amazing <laughs> little family tree so that oh. we can make sense of... Well, yeah, I'm going to... That, that was very helpful. I that have to excellent. add some more faces and names to this for next week because we have some more players in the game. Yeah. And also, thank you for putting up with us in our third eye blind <laughs> references. It's all right. It's all right. If you I don't want to see us again, I would, you know, I would get it. I liked it. You would understand? My yeah, friend. I was trying not to be so ham-fisted, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You are the only hero in the group, Matt. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I firmly agree. I just feel like we're a group of grifters and malcontents. Like, <laughs> Well, that's in line with the setting. It's all good. Yeah. You should see the weirdos in the other group that we ran. Well, this has been an absolute blast. I'm going to go drink water. <laughs> you gentlemen have a wonderful evening. And you thank too. You for everybody who got to watch. I'm going to end. Good night, man. Thanks for